Hey there, it's Bree, and today we are going to see how many books that remind you of me are actually on my shelf. Recently I posted on Instagram, I asked everyone who follows me to let me know what books remind them of me, and I got a bunch of responses, I took screenshots of them, so I like kind of vaguely glanced at them. I'm predicting <laughs> that I'll, I'll pick my top three that I think people are going to say. I think they're going to say Marianne, any Marianne is a pot of book, um, probably Archer's Voice, and then probably like Lauren Rowe. That's my prediction that people are going to say, but we'll see if I'm right. But I thought I would do this a little differently instead of this just being like a sit down me talk to you video. I thought that we would go to my phone and do a phone cam and I would see if I actually physically own the book that they're talking about. And if I don't own the book that they're talking about, we'll come back here and I'll tell you a little bit about the book or the author that they talk about. I thought it would be fun to see which ones I actually physically own because recently over the past couple of years, I have stopped buying books that I just want to read. It's very rare that I will buy a book for my TBR that I haven't already read yet. And what I mean by buy a book, I mean a physical book because I'll buy audios obviously and eBooks of books I have read yet but to physically buy a book because I so rarely read physically to me I'm, I own these books and keep them as mementos so I've been trying to focus more on only buying books that I've already read and loved and want to have on my shelf and display on my shelf because I loved them so I will say caveat to this <laughs> there will be a couple of books that I love that someone mentions that probably won't be on my shelf because my niece is starting get starting to get into reading contemporary romances and I let her borrow a lot of books and luckily she gives them back to me sometimes it usually takes her a while and then I also have books lent out to like my sister and I have books lent out to friends and everything so my books are kind of everywhere. So I will probably own some of these that won't be on my shelf, but I'm just curious to see. So the first one is Archer's Voice and Monster Romances. Now I can tell you right now that I do not have Archer's Voice. Archer's Voice is, I, ha I just let my niece borrow it and she just finished it. And she said that she was emotionally, what did she say? She said, I finished, oh my God, I had no idea that I would feel emotionally abused. <laughs> So she said that she loved the book, but it was very, it was very hard on her. She's very, she's a very emotional person, which is very exciting and fun when she reads like one of my favorite books because she gets so invested. And my favorite thing is that she sends me like videos and pictures of her as she's reading it. And last night she was reading Archer's Voice and she got to a certain part of it and she was just like bawling her eyes out and she like sent a video. <laughs> of her crying and it was absolutely amazing. Like anyone who is obsessed with a book should, or if they're anything like me, loves to have someone experience a book the same way that you experienced it for the first time because then you get to live vicariously through them. So it's been amazing. Archer's Voice is a an emotional, apparently, <laughs> contemporary small town romance and it's a loner hero and the heroine is new to town and it's one of, it has a virgin hero. It is one of my all time favorite books. If you like the loner hero, a little bit grumpy kind of sunshine situation, you're gonna love this book. But let's go see what monster romances I have on my shelf. So, we have, I guess Radiance would be considered monster romances. All of these, these are monster romances. Most of, most of my monster romances that I love are right there. So I love that monster romances are related to me. Okay, I got another Archer's Voice. <laughs> and then I have all Mariana Zapata books. So let's go see my Mariana Zapata collection because I know I do have Mariana Zapata on my bookshelf. Okay, so here is my beautiful Mariana Zapata collection. Of course I have Mariana Zapata. I'm only missing a couple of them. I think I'm missing Rhythm Corda Malikin and uh, her latest book. But I do have two copies of All Roads Lead here because I have the original copy and then the special edition copy and they're beautiful. Mariana Zapata is known for her slow burns, like every single one of them, and they are chunkers. I am not the type of person who likes long, chunky books unless it's by Mariana Zapata. I would read, if this was one book, one book spine, I would love every second of it if it was Mariana Zapata, I'm telling you right now. But yeah, so I just, I'm missing the latest book. I need that one because I love that one too. But I have read Mariana Zapata's entire backlist and of course she is displayed. Okay, and so this next one says, anything Amanda Milo related in Archer's Voice. So like I said, <laughs> we just talked about Archer's Voice. I have a feeling Archer's Voice is going to be on here quite a bit. I do have Amanda Milo on my bookshelf. So let's go check it out. So we have Beth Stable, I have The Werewolf Nanny, The Quarry Master, and then these two books don't have anything on the spine, but I believe it is Contagion and then... I think this one's Contagion, and then this one is the Christmas Nanny one. Amanda Milo is, writes hilarious rom-com alien romances. They are absolutely amazing and so swoony, and they do have an emotional element to them too. And she is probably my favorite 
alien slash monster romance author. And then someone said The Morgan Brothers by Lauren Rowe. I do have this series on my bookshelf. However, I don't have the entire series with me because my sister is borrowing it right now, but let's go take a look. Again, they nailed it because this is also on top, <laughs> on the top. So my favorites, they are usually right here. I have much more than this, but like I said, my sister has the Morgan Brothers series. These three are part of the Morgan Brothers series. And then this is the special edition of Swoon. I actually don't think I have the original edition of Swoon, and this is actually a spinoff of the Morgan Brothers series. Um, I don't think I have the original version of Swoon. Yeah, and then the club is kind of also a spinoff as well, and so is Smitten. And this is the special edition version of Smitten. But like I said, my sister has them. But yeah, they're here on my bookshelf. Those who don't know, Lauren Rowe's books and the Morgan Brothers series obviously follows the Morgan Brothers contemporary romance. And this is a kind of laugh out loud rom-com. There are all different tropes throughout this entire series. This one is kind of enemies to lovers. It also has a wedding in it. It's interesting because it's kind of like love at first sight, but then it turns into enemies to lovers. It's really good. Next is the Puck series by Helena Hunting. This is one of my, this is probably my favorite hockey romance and it is a contemporary series. I love the series so much. The first book and then like the last book are my favorites. And they are on my shelf. They're not on my on the top of my shelf though. Let's go take a look at them. So I actually have the Pucked series here on the second shelf only because they didn't fit there. There's so many books in the Puck series that I had to put them on the second shelf, but I wanted to have all of her books all in one spot and that would take up a really big space up top. So I put it on the first shelf. So this is actually a spinoff series of these. I need to get the other spinoff series. These might be out of order. Everyone's gonna be driven crazy by how I organize my books on here because they're not in order. Like I'm pretty sure this is the first book and then this and then this. I'm missing one more book from this series. It wasn't my favorite though, but these are all out of order. Oh yeah, it absolutely is because this is the first book right here. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, this is, um, I have these down here. I need to get the other spinoff series. That's the new adult series. I think it's Little Lies. I need to get it because I'm obsessed with it. Okay, and then any Megan Quinn. This is actually kind of funny and a little bit unexpected because I love Megan Quinn. She's not my all-time favorite author. I really do like her books though. And the main reason why I read Megan Quinn is because my dad actually loves her. I do have a small handful of books on my shelf that are Megan Quinn books. There are a couple that are like my favorite that I got as gifts from friends because it was on my wish list. I think most of the ones that I have on my shelf though are books that I got from my mom because my mom read them because my dad liked them and my mom doesn't keep physical books. She always gives them to me. So she read the books and then she gave them to me. So let's go see which ones I have on my shelf. Okay, so this one is not on my top favorite. So it's not on, up on the top of the shelves, but it's on like the second bookshelf and second shelf. So these are the Megan Quinn books I have. I have one more that I haven't read yet and I have it on my TBR cart. That was a gift from Cheyenne. I think it's her favorite, but these are the ones that I have. I have Kiss and Don't Tell, Boss Man Bridegroom, The Lineup, See Me After Class, and Co-Wrecker. This was actually, this one I got from Shameless Book.com. This was the first book that I ever got from Megan Quinn. It was the first book that I think I read by her. Did I read that? I can't remember. But yeah, so these are, this is my little Megan Quinn collection. Like I said, Megan Quinn writes mostly contemporary rom-coms. And then Real by Kennedy Ryan. So I do own this book, but my sister is actually borrowing it because I annotated it and I handed it off to my sister. She will then hand it to my mom who will hand it off to my other sister and then it'll come back to me. So we're annotating that one. I love that people relate this book to me so much because I adore this book. This book is my heart and soul. Normally when people message me or ask me for a recommendation, my number one recommendation is usually Real by Kennedy Ryan. It has amazing chronic illness rep in it. The heroine has lupus. She's also a Broadway performer and the hero is a director. It's it's not necessarily Grumpy Sunshine, but he's like kind of a broody kind of character. One of my favorite heroes, his mom had MS, so he is very familiar with autoimmune diseases, which relates itself well when it comes to their relationship. It's also forbidden romance because again, he's the director and she's gonna be the main actress in his movie. So, so good. And then Archer's Voice, another Archer's Voice. Oh, and then Culmination of Everything and anything by Regine Abel. So I have both of those books on my bookshelf. Let's go see them. So I am slowly but surely <laughs> building my Christina C. Jones collection here. Um, I think I have one more over on my TBR cart, but culmination of everything is this one. I believe this is the first book in her small town romance series. I think it's called Sweet, oh, I forget the name of the series, but this is a small town romance series. It is grumpy, not necessarily sunshine, but the hero is grumpy. It's hate, to friends with benefits to lovers, I guess we would call it. 
Um, and there's a little bit of an emotional element in it. The heroine is a doctor, but I love Christina C. Jones. I love her sense of humor. I love her books. She comes out with a million books. <laughs> she has a huge backlist, but I am so excited to get through her entire backlist. I usually add at least one Christina C. Jones book to my TBR every month because I love her so much. But these are all the ones that I own, plus a couple more over on my TBR shelf. And then she also said Regine Abel, and this is my Regine Abel collection right here. These are the ones that I have. There are a few that I'm missing. I have some of her um, Prime Mating Agency series, and then I have the Nightmare here. I need to get the Mist, and I need to get the rest of her Prime Mating Agency. Regine Abel writes mostly like sci-fi fantasy, but she's kind of known for her alien romance, specifically this series. These are all um, Marriage of Convenience. Fun story about how I found out about Regine Abel. I found out about Regine Abel because Mariana Zapata tweeted asking if there, if anyone knew any more books like I Married a Lizard Man. And I was like, I'm sorry, is Mariana Zapata recommending a book? I immediately picked it up and fell in love. So that is my Regine Abel collection. So I kind of feel like it should be noted, and I probably should have noted this at the beginning, but it should be noted that Honestly, so much of my collection has been gifted to me by amazing friends, subscribers, followers. It's just incredible how many books I own because of you guys, because people have gone to my wish list and wanted to get me a little something for whatever reason. So I appreciate you all so much. My book collection is amazing as it is, a big part because of you guys and I appreciate that. Art, another Archer's Voice, another Anything Lauren Rowe, another Morgan Brothers by Lauren Rowe. So I feel like I predicted this right. Anything by, by Mariana Zapata, Lauren Rowe, ooh, Alexis Hall and Kennedy Ryan. Let's go see what Alexis Hall books I have. Not enough, I'll tell you that much. I'm telling you, you guys are nailing it because again, we have books that are at the top of my shelf. So yes, Alexis Hall is right here. This is my Alexis Hall collection. So we have Boyfriend Material, Husband Material, a Lady for a Duke, Something Fabulous and For Real. Alexis Hall writes mostly queer romance. He is probably one of my favorite rom-com writers. And most, mo I say most, most of his books are um, contemporary. Okay, and so my Kennedy Ryan collection starts here and it goes all the way down here. I have several special editions. These three are special edition, special editions. This one's special edition. I do not have real, but I need to. And I also am missing, because I love these original covers. I need to get the new covers of the Grip series, but I'm also missing Grip in the original cover and it's killing me. So if anyone wants to sell me their original cover of Grip, please let me know. I would love to buy it from you. I have the Kingmaker and the Rebel King. These are both special edition covers. And Kennedy Ryan tends to write A, books with amazing representation in it, and B, books that are pretty emotional and hard hitting. And also the romances are some of the most romantic and swoony romances there are. Okay, and then we have Mercy. And this is from someone who it makes complete sense why this would remind her of me. And honestly, this book reminds me of her too. It's because we kind of bonded over this book, Monica with the a Accidental Romance Blogger. But I do have Mercy on my shelf. But I will say, I just literally today let my niece borrow the rest of the series. She has Mercy, and then she has the other three books in the series that I let her borrow. But I do have the special edition of Mercy still on my shelf. Let's go look at it. Okay, so behind my little drink tea, read books, be happy sign, we have the special edition of Mer Mercy. Like I said, the reason why there's a space here is because that's where the rest of the series goes. But... This is the special edition cover of Mercy. I'm obsessed with it. This is, and I gave this to my niece to read because she's never read a dark romance. And to me, this is a great intro to dark romance book because it is a dark romance because he's a stalker, but also Deborah Anastasia has a really great sense of humor. So it's kind of funny too. So it's like a dark light romance. So great introduction to dark romance right here. The culmination, another the culmination of everything. Yay, I'm so glad I introduced so many people to this book because I love that series. She said, I read it last month and loved it. Oh, that makes my heart so happy. I feel like, because I hadn't heard of that series before. I've heard, obviously I've heard of Chrissy and C. Jones by plenty of people, but I felt like I didn't hear a lot of people talking about that particular series. I'm like, why not? I think this is my favorite one by her. So very excited. I have another Regine Abel books. That's from Ava. Um, Hearts in Darkness. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad that this is a book that reminds people of me because I am obsessed. This is like old school. I fell in love with this around the same time I fell in love with Archer's Voice and I love it almost as much. So let's go take a look. I do have this on my shelf. Again, Hearts in Darkness is up at the top here. I have the special edition of Hearts in Darkness because this actually... Oops, Focus. It has Love in the Light in it, which is the second book in the duet, because it's just a novella, the first book and the second book. 
But then she also wrote a bunch of like epilogues and stuff. This edition, the, the 10th anniversary edition, has everything she ever wrote for it. I also have the original Heart from Darkness. See, it's super short. So good. It is a romance uh, between a the hero and the heroine who meet in an elevator that is pitch black and is stuck. And he has panic attacks. Great panic attack representation. And I can say that because I get panic attacks. Y'all, I'm not going to lie. It's kind of tiring getting up and sitting back down. <laughs> over and over again. I need a nap after this. Ooh, Contagion by Amanda Milo. I do have that on my bookshelf. It's over on that stack that I showed earlier. It's actually on the bottom. Contagion is so freaking adorable. I felt I added this to my video that was intro to alien and monster and weird romances because it's so freaking cute and adorable and it's nice and short and sweet. And he is like an alien alien. Like he's not very humanoid at all, but it's great because he is a hypochondriac alien and he actually gets abducted by humans. It's fantastic and hilarious. I loved it. Um, another person that said hearts and darkness. Yay. I love that. Another person that said anything by Lauren Rowe. Someone that said The Quarry Master. Oh my God, I love that. The Quarry Master is my favorite Amanda Milo book. Um, that one, if you love an epic grumpy sunshine and if you like slow burns, you're gonna love that book. It's so freaking good. The Wall of Winnipeg and Me, that's by Mariana Zapata. That is my favorite Mariana Zapata book. I love it so freaking much. Anything Chloe Lise, yay. Let me go show you. Of course I have Chloe Lise on my bookshelf. And of course it is on the top here. Here's my, this one's actually in order. Aren't you guys proud of me? At some point I will, I need to redo all of this, but this is my Chloe Lee's collection right here. I have the entire series except for the new one that hasn't come out yet. It has great neurodivergence representation, disability representation, all that good stuff. There's a lot of different um, tropes in this but I just love Chloe Lee so much. We got another Archer's Voice. Oh my goodness, Marriage for One, yes, I love this. So let's go see it. That one definitely is on my bookshelf. It is well-loved because that's a book that I made my mom read and like the spine's all messed up because it's such a big book, like it's hard not to mess up a spine. Let's go look at it. Definitely at the top shelf right next to Mercy. Here's Marriage for One. This is the only book by Ella Mays that I have on my shelf. I really do wanna get the rest of her books because I've read plenty of books by her that I really liked. But I love this one. It is an epic slow burn, epic grumpy sunshine, and it is Marriage of Convenience. I love this book so much. You guys, the amount of things that I knocked over on my bookshelf doing this. <laughs> so if like the background is changing a bit, that's why. Birthday Girl, yes. Oh my gosh, I love that this is related back to me. It is one of my all-time favorites, but I feel like this isn't one that people normally relate to me. So I'm excited this is on the list because I love it. And of course, it is definitely on my top shelf of top shelf of favorites. It is down here at the bottom, but it's right here, Birthday Girl. And then the other book that I love by Penelope Douglas, which is Credence. This, much like Mercy over here, I feel like Birthday Girl is a good intro to taboo romances because, because it is a taboo romance. It's a boyfriend's dad romance and there's also a big age gap but i feel like it's actually tolerable in this book uh, i love that this one was the choice too they said the hating game obviously i freaking love the hating game so much and of course it is on my shelf there are different versions of it that I want to get though, because I know there's like a UK version. I think there's like a pink version. I need to get all those versions, but I do have it on my shelf. Let's go look. Okay, The Hating Game is right here. Again, top shelf of favorites. Love this book so much. I actually have like three or four copies of this book. I don't know where I put the other copies, but I have a few copies of this book because I kept blending it out and people kept like losing it. And then I would buy a new one and then I would get it back from them. So. <laughs> I ended up, I kept like buying myself new copies of it. So that one looks pretty new, even though my original one was pretty beat up and annotated and all that stuff, but it got lent out and then never seen again, so. Oh, and then from Luke Off With Love, which is a Mariana Zapata book, that one is Between Two Ice Skaters and It's Enemies to Lovers, obviously Slow Burn. Got another Wall of Winnipeg in me, another two more Archer's Voice, love that. Oh, I actually got Akatar and I will show you that shelf because I have an entire Sarah J Mass shelf. So in case you don't know the abbreviation for Akatar, it's A Court of Thorns and Roses. These are all completely out of order. These are the special edition covers that I got. This is a, if, if somehow you don't already know, this is a super popular fantasy romance series. So another person, my friend Lauren, it said Archer's Voice, Morgan Brothers, and anything Britney C. Cherry, that's right. I'm surprised actually that Britney C. Cherry wasn't mentioned more, but I do have Britney on my, on my bookshelf. So let's go see. Much like Kalina Hunting, Britney C. Cherry's on the second shelf just because I have all of her books except for her recent release. And these are all completely out of order. But yes, I love Britney C. Cherry. She writes emotional romances, 
Most of them have grumpy heroes and I love it so freaking much. My favorite book by her is Behind the Bars. Oh, and then The Gravity of Us, which is another Brittany C. Cherry book. This one is like the ultimate grumpy sunshine book and it's also very slow burn. And then another person said, so many, anything by Mariana Zapata, yep. I married a lizard man, yep, real, yep. <laughs> part of your world, to name a few. Oh my gosh, part of your world is a recent favorite. So to be known for that is very exciting. Oh, always only you. Thanks to you, I fell in love with this series. Oh, I'm so glad that you fell in love with the, with the Bergman Brothers series. That's Chloe Lee's up there that I talked about earlier. I love it. All Mariana Zapata books. Yes, love that. Art, another Archer's Voice and another Mariana Zapata. <laughs> oh my gosh, Morning Glory Milking Farm. Yes, you said you would work there and I have never forgotten that. <laughs> Okay, but like raise your hand down below if you would work at Morning Glory Milking Farm, just saying. And yes, I do have that on my bookshelf and I have a couple of editions of it. <laughs> it is at the top top with all the rest of my favorites over here. We have these two versions of Morning Glory Milking Farm. This one is the Hello Lovely Box version and this is the original version. These are monster romances. The hero is a minotaur and it's exactly what you think it is, but it also happens to be a slow burn. It's so good. Archer's Voice and Monster Romances, 100% Archer's Voice, all Mariana Zapata books. This made me so happy to look at these responses because it truly feels like the people who responded know me and it, I don't know, there's something about it that was very heartwarming. So I appreciate everyone who participated. I loved it so much. Actually, let me know down below if you want an entire tour of all of my favorite books, like maybe I'll do a video of all of my top favorites that are up here, or maybe I'll do like an overview video of all of my favorites that I've read, like the physical books that I'm keeping on my shelf because I loved them. Let me know. And maybe I could do a video of like the ones that I still need, a video of the TBR that I actually have because it's pretty small. It's only like one shelf now, which I'm very proud of myself for. That's for adult romance though. The other genres that I have on my bookshelf, absolutely not. I've barely read any of them because I went through a phase where I bought a ton of YA fantasy books because I was mostly buying them for covers. I, if I'm looking up here and around because all of my YA fantasy is like right in front of me, but I bought a ton of them as cover buys because my thought to myself when I initially was putting to, together my library, I was like, oh, well, I'll just, I'm just going to cover buy books because YA fantasy covers whether we want to admit it or not, are beautiful. And I was like, even if I don't read them, who cares? This is for decoration. But like half of these, you can't even see the covers anyway, because you can only see the spines. I don't know, kind of over that phase of my life. So I have a bunch of these listed on Depop, like YA fantasies and stuff and YA contemporaries, because I don't think I'll ever read them. And I want to make space for my all time favorite adult contemporary romances that I've read. All right, guys, that is it. I'm going to end this here. Thank you for hanging out with me. I hope you like this style of video. Let me know down below if you want any of those videos that I mentioned before. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. And as always, happy reading. Mwah.